Greetings, my friends, and welcome to the channel. I'm your host, Hadron. It is safe to say that the First World War was very different than the Second World War. And when we think of the First World War, what we think of often are the trenches, the stalemate, the years spent across from each other, the meat grinder. But the war did not start that way, and it did not end that way. And as a matter of fact, the war was fought in three phases, the beginning, the middle, and the end. The middle, the longest part, and the vast majority of the war, was this trench warfare that we understand well. But the beginning of the war was very, very different. It was a running battle from Germany to France, all the way to Paris. On this episode, we're going to explore the events that led up to the war, culminating in the crucial moment of von Kluck's turn, and how the war was saved for the Allies. At the end of the Franco-Prussian War, the German Empire was born. It instantly became one of the most powerful land empires in the world, and it also instantly became surrounded on all sides by its enemies. To the west was France, whom they had just defeated in the war. To the east was the Russian Empire under the Tsar, a rising power in the world. And further west, of course, was the British Empire. Otto von Bismarck, the Chancellor of Germany, understood that in order to protect Germany, to keep it safe, an alliance needed to be formed with at least one of these powers to keep Germany from being enveloped. During his time, he was successful in securing an alliance to the east with Russia, thus keeping Germany safe. However, the Kaiser, Wilhelm II, or Emperor of Germany, fired von Bismarck in March 1890. Von Bismarck had managed to create a very fragile system of alliances, keeping Germany safe, but with his departure, Russia was driven away from Germany, straight into the arms of France. The two formed a military alliance. Thus, Germany found itself surrounded on the west and eastern flanks of its empire. Only the south, the Austro-Hungarian Empire, remained their allies. All this matters because it sets the stage for the First World War. The events that would lead to the First World War did not start in Germany, or France, or Russia. They started in Sarajevo. The Archduke Franz Ferdinand was the heir apparent of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. And in Sarajevo, he was assassinated by a conspiracy on the hands of Gavrielo Princep, a member of Young Bosnia and armed by the Black Hand. Now Sarajevo was being ruled over by the Austro-Hungarian Empire, and Gavrielo and his compatriots were patriots and freedom fighters for a cause. They wanted to break away from the Empire. But one man's freedom fighter is another man's terrorist, and unfortunately, Gavrielo Princep did not realize, and I imagine if he did realize what he was about to start, he probably would never have pulled the trigger. What was done is done. The Archduke was dead, and the world began to march towards war. Young Bosnia worked with the Black Hand, and the Black Hand was supported by the Serbian Kingdom. Serbia was a Slavic nation, and when Austria-Hungary threatened to invade, this caused their Slavic brothers and sisters in Russia to start rattling their saber in preparation for war to come to Serbia's defense. And this is where the tangled web of military alliances in Europe became problematic. Russia, if they went to war against Austria-Hungary, would end up at war with Germany which would also mean that France would be at war with Germany and with Austria-Hungary. Thus, the actions by one snowballed out of control, ultimately leading to an untenable situation and the July Crisis. Due to Germany's precarious situation being surrounded on its western and eastern flanks, many years before the war, a plan was drawn up by Alfred von Schlieffen. The idea was simple. France would be quick to war. Russia would not. Thus, Germany would focus all of its efforts to the west to destroy France before Russia could mobilize. Thus, if they could destroy France quickly and knock them out of the fighting, they would be able to turn all of their attention towards Russia. But the entire von Schlieffen plan depended on surprise and quick action. This meant if Russia declared war on Austria-Hungary, that meant that France would immediately be at war with Germany, and Germany would be forced to attack France not Russia, with all haste. And because of the unique geography between Germany and France, the territories that Germany and France shared were not easily passable. 
The easiest land to pass between west and east between the two empires was through neutral countries. These neutral countries had treaties that had been drawn up over the years to protect them. Both empires realized that these were vulnerable locations. As a matter of fact, Belgium in particular was crucially important because Belgium was a strategic position between three empires, Germany, France, and Great Britain due to its proximity to the island. Thus, in the Treaty of London, all three major powers guaranteed Belgium's neutrality forever. And the von Schlieffen plan specifically required Germany to invade Belgium, a neutral country, in order to defeat France as fast as possible. The idea was simple. Germany would swing as far right towards the channel as possible, move through Belgium, the Netherlands, Luxembourg, and they would pass into northern France, swinging around behind Paris and thus enveloping the entire army of the French, which would likely be positioned on the German-French border. This quick, violent, and illegal invasion would rapidly knock France out of the war. On July 28, 1914, the Austro-Hungarian Empire declared war on Serbia. On the following day, the 29th, Russia began mobilizing its troops to support their Serbian brothers and sisters. On the 31st of July, Germany sent an ultimatum to Russia, demanding at once that they cease mobilizing their forces immediately. On that same day, Britain asked Germany to guarantee the neutrality of Belgium if conflict erupted. On the next day, August the 1st, 1914, Germany declared war on Russia. On the 3rd, Germany declared war on France and then began their invasion of Belgium. 750,000 troops began the invasion of Belgium and began passing through its streets. The British Empire, guarantors of the Treaty of London, decided to declare war on Germany, joining the alliance on the 4th of August, the following day. And thus, the greatest powers in the world were now embroiled in a conflict with each other, which would last four years, three months, and 14 days, and lead to the death of almost 16 million people. On that same day, August the 4th, Germany began the Battle of Liège, the first major battle of the First World War. Two days later, on August the 6th, Austria-Hungary declared war on Russia. Germany's invasion of Belgium destroyed its reputation around the world, an unprovoked violation of a neutral country that reverberated around the entire planet. The brave Belgian defenders did everything they could to save their country, but they were massively outnumbered and overwhelmed. The Germans steamrolled their way through Belgium into France, beating resistance by the French army and the British as they desperately fought to hold back the advancing Germans. But unfortunately, because the bulk of the French army was on the German border, they were caught unprepared and on their back foot. Germany continued to move west and south, heading towards Paris. As the war continued, the casualties mounted at an unbelievable rate. The bloodshed was terrible and both forces were exhausted. This was during a time where there were no tanks. The soldiers marched by foot or by horse, and thus they continued to fight and engage each other as they pressed further and further deeper into France until the Germans reached the Marne River on the 6th of September, 1914. They were now within sight of the Eiffel Tower and Paris. As had been originally planned, the German army began to swing eastwards the idea was to cut off the French army and keep them isolated and surrounded. General von Kluck of the First Army began to turn, as was arranged, to begin this maneuver. But as he did this, he exposed his right flank to the city of Paris and the enormous amount of soldiers that had begun massing in that city. Seeing this error, the French attacked the right flank of the German army. It was in this crucial hour that von Kluck was forced to turn to confront the French who were attacking him on his right flank. And when he did this, he split a gap between the 1st and 2nd German armies, and the British Expeditionary Force and French Army were able to push deep into this gap. It was now the 1st German Army that was threatened with encirclement. In order to restabilize their position, the German Army had to stop, fall back, and regroup. And as they did this, the Allies harried them back across the River Marne and towards Belgium. 
At one point it was believed, unequivocally, that France would fall, that Germany would win the war. But with this miracle on the Marne, the French had held with the support of their British allies and had pushed the German army backwards. The Germans, harried and continuing to fall back, eventually stopped, dug in, and established the trenches and the fortifications that would make the First World War such a horrific and endless battle of attrition. Well, if you made it this far, it's safe to say that you enjoy this type of content. So what are your thoughts on the First World War and the miracle of the Marne? I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. And also, if you have any suggestions for any future episodes or videos, I'd also like to hear about those as well. All the usual suspects, please like, comment, and subscribe. I know it's annoying for me to ask, but every little bit helps and helps grow the channel. And uh, it'll keep you in the loop in any future episodes that come up. And if you enjoy the content, I imagine you would want that. Thanks for tuning in, and until next time, be safe, be kind.